Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's special stream. Uh, music for this stream, like all streams in the month of August, is provided by Pipe Dream Hits. We're going to leave the music up on this stream because I'm going to be doing some work. Tonight what I want to show you is I want to show you demonstration of some work I've been doing for my Sunday uh, afternoon planeswalking D&D game. This is a special story arc that we are on and in this story arc the characters are exploring a mansion and in that mansion they are finding pieces of little playing cards. Let me go ahead and turn this music down just a tad. Like I said, I want to keep music playing in the background, but I don't want it to overpower what I'm saying to you guys. All right, so they're finding pieces of playing cards and not just any playing cards but pieces of magic the gathering playing cards why well because this is a planeswalking campaign and the characters are visiting settings not only native to D&D, but settings native to magic the gathering and in this particular story arc they have a chance to find pieces of ripped up cards put those cards together by the use of a creature called a tape elemental and then they can either choose to bring those cards back to the demi plane they started from in order to get treasure in the form of large amounts of gold or they can bring those back to get uh, actual spells that they can use. As all five of the players in the game are spellcasters, so I chose five different spells. And yes, I know what you guys are saying. You're looking at this and you're going, are you kidding? You're using cards out of unglued. Yes, I am using cards out of unglued for a couple of different reasons. Number one, a lot of the places that they have been uh, a lot of the realms they have been to in uh, settings for Magic Gathering have been very deadly. And they've had a lot of fighting to do. And some of them have been very grim. And for the second thing, I've always loved Magic the Gathering as a game. But I've never had the patience to take that game seriously. I enjoy the fun types of games which means you give me gimmick decks you give me gimmick cards you give me things that just throw a random bit of chaos into the game and i am i am the happiest uh, because i don't like sitting there and trying to figure out the strategy of how my deck is going to win by beating every strategy every possible opponent could throw against me that's just too much work i just want to play the game i don't want to i don't want to waste time doing a whole lot of stuff so everything plus of course i've created specific spells for dungeons and dragons 5e that are based on these cards but what i'm going to show you is how i turn these cards into actual uh, actual puzzle pieces that the players find and then have to figure out how to put together. So, uh, what I have here is I have my favorite handy dandy art program open. Uh, it's GIMP. GIMP is similar to, but a freeware version is very similar to Photoshop. So it gives you the ability to create images with a lot of layers and you can do a lot of effects and you can do everything. So what we are creating is we're creating different puzzles and I'm going to show you or different puzzle pieces. I'm going to show you a couple of the ones that I have already done 
and um, show you how they work. So a couple of the ones that I've already completed are, uh, or one of the ones I've already completed are the black or lotus. And you'll notice over here on the right hand side of my layers, what I've done is I've created a bunch of different layers and I'm only right now having the base layer visible, which is the entire card. But then I have a layer that I create that I call Jigsaw. And what Jigsaw is, is it's just a layer where I go in and I create little lines, which are basically going to be the cut lines where I cut the various pieces of the card. And then each one of the um, additional cards, you'll see if I, if I uh, make these uh, areas visible, almost nothing changes. The only thing you may notice is that occasionally you we will have a little bit of these jigsaw lines will kind of disappear because there's a slight bit of overlap because I'm not perfect in uh, creating these different pieces. So once we once we get it all in focus, you should just basically see the whole card. But then what's going to happen is that when I turn off the base layer and I turn off the uh, jigsaw layer, I'm then going to be able to start turning off the other different pieces of the card. And then what I will be left with when I choose to export is I'm going to be left with a piece of the card that the players will find in a certain location within this mansion. And then they have to figure out how many other pieces of the same card there are, put them all together, and then feed all of those to the tape elemental. So this is kind of the mini game that I'm setting up for my characters or for my players in the uh, Sunday afternoon game. All right, so uh, we've seen this. And again... I've already done everything on the Big Furry Monster right side card as well. But now we're going to go through the censorship card. So the first thing I have to do is I have to go back and I have to look at, to my notes. <coughs> and I have to figure out how many pieces I decided there was going to be in the censorship card. Hey, uh, Virgility, thank you for the follow and hey guys, thanks so much for uh, hanging out this evening. Got a few viewers on. All right, uh, let's go and let's uh, take a look. I have four car or four pieces that are going to be in censorship. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go over back over here, and you can do this if you have GIMP, which is like I said, it's a um, open source uh, graphics manipulation program that you can download or if you have Photoshop or if you have any other similar uh, graphics program that allows you to create images with layers you can do the same thing now also fun fact about this if you're using artwork like this in your D&D game you are perfectly within your rights by the copyright of Wizards of the Coast to take their card artwork as well as their D&D artwork and manipulate it and change it and everything. The only thing is you cannot claim it's your own art. So clearly anybody who looks at this would go, yeah, that's a Magic the Gathering card. You're not fooling anybody. And it's not like, oh, yeah, uh, somebody, you know, this guy that I watched this video, he, he invented this card. No, no, he didn't. Uh, Wizards of the Coast invented it, and they released it in the un, in the unglued set. So we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call the layer Jigsaw. And then that layer is going to uh, just naturally ride right on top of the base layer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to get our pencil tool. And we're going to uh, make the size of our pencil 2. And the 
uh, we're going to make the color of our pencil black uh, just because that's kind of an easy color and we know that we need to create four pieces for this card so uh, I am going I want it to be a little bit kind of like a jigsaw I don't want it to be a perfectly um, you know four square pieces that are easy to put together so I'm gonna go for this one I'm gonna click in the top left corner and then I'm gonna hold down my shift key when I hold down my shift key this um, allows me to stretch a line and then just click again to add another point and then I go down here and click to add another point then I go over here and click to add another point and then I come up here to add another point and then I go down here to add another point and then I'm just gonna go up here and um, finish that one okay so that becomes one of my cut lines so now I have two pieces I need to uh, add two more pieces and I can do that by finding a point along this line so let's just say I want to whoops I just want to go to this point right here then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna have it go here I'm going to bring it back here. I'm going to have it go here. I'm going to have it go here. Have it go down here and then have it come down here. All right. So now I have a top piece, the left piece, the right piece. That's three pieces. I need one more piece. So I have to go to one more of these little uh, angle breaks here. I think I'm going to go to this one right here. And then I will come down and do this. Come up and do that. Come down over here. And then come down over here. All right. So now that's my jigsaw piece. You know, those are my jigsaw lines, I should say. Uh, that is where I am uh, going to have those uh, those pieces of the cards separated. So then, going back to my notes, I need to figure out, or I need to remember, where the party is finding each of these pieces. And so I know I have four layers, but those layers are going to be keyed to the areas of the map where they're going to find them. And I'm just using that because it makes it easier for me to remember what I'm supposed to put where when it comes to the map. So, uh, the, these pieces are area 9, 25C, 15, and 35 on the map. So, I am then going to go back to my layer control add a new layer and this one I'm going to call area 9 and then I'm going to add another layer and call it area 25 C um, then I'll add a layer that's area 15 And then I'll add a layer that is area 35. Okay. And here we have the number of pieces that are the different areas that we're going to put our, um, our pieces in. All right. So then I want to go back and I need to make sure I'm selecting my base layer because the base layer is where the actual card image is. And when I make these pieces, I want to grab pieces of the card image. I don't want to grab pieces of the jigsaw. That's why the jigsaw is on a separate layer. 
so that when I'm working on the actual base layer, I'm not picking up those lines even though I can see them and I'm using them as guides. So then what I do is I do the free selection tool, which looks like a lasso in uh, GIMP, and I think that's also what it looks like in uh, Photoshop is a lasso. So uh, <clears throat> I then go over to the very beginning of my uh, first piece over here. And again, I'm going to use, well, actually, I don't have to use my shift. I just have to use my click. Um, and I just am going to the best as I can trace these little lines. And by tracing these lines, I'm going to then um, select a portion of my image. And then with this lasso tool, you can go outside the boundaries of the actual image. And then you click on the rectangle selection tool and it suddenly turns that into a selectable area. So now you make sure you're on the censorship and you do a control C, which copies that piece. Then you go over to area nine. And when you get to area nine, you just do a control V and you paste that in and then you click to drop that onto the area nine layer. All right. And now if I uh, turn off my main image, I can see that I indeed have that part of the card sitting on the layer called area nine. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically rinse and repeat that for the other three pieces, the pieces that go in there. So now I go back to my lasso tool. I click over here to begin the, um, free selection for the first part of this it's going to mirror exactly what we did until the lines for the next piece diverge which now we go down to about here and then come on down to about here and then over here and then over here and then over here and then down to here and again i'm not i'm not trying to be absolutely perfect because the point for the players is not to be able to be able to uh, grab the pieces that they need. All right. So I was about to make a boo-boo. I was about to uh, do my copy when I was not on the correct layer. Now I'm on the uh, base layer, the censorship layer. So I copy this. Then I jump up to area 25C to that layer. And I paste. And I drop. And now I have that piece on there. All right. So <laughs> anyone else? <laughs> Drats. Uh, Drats says, anyone else picturing the players playing in their head? Believe in the heart of the cards. D -d -d Duel. Uh, why not use magic selecting and go to your jigsaw, select one of the pieces to target them, then go to your base to copy that piece to your other area. Oh, um, that's a good, uh, that's actually a good point. That's another way you could do that, uh, Drats. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and let's try that on the, uh, 
next piece here. So uh, if we go to, uh, that's the fuzzy select tool. Let's do the magic select tool. Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, that's, I guess that is the fuzzy select tool is what I want. Um, so I am going to go to the jigsaw layer and I will click this and then I go to censorship and I can copy that and then I can jump up to area 15 and I can paste that and then um, go ahead and drop it in and then yep see that works okay uh, good suggestion there Drat that's a uh, quicker way of going about um, going about doing the same thing and saving time is always a lot of fun um uh, I was trying to be more precise than I needed to be for the purposes of doing this. Okay, then with our last piece, I'm going to go back to the jigsaw layer. We'll grab this last piece here. We will um, go to censorship. We'll copy. Then we'll go over to area 35 and we will uh, paste. And all right. So now if we turn that off, yes, indeed, we now have our fourth piece. So now each of these pieces here is a separate selectable layer that I can eventually come back, make a separate image of, export that image, and then place it uh, as a handout in the area where they are supposed to have it. Uh, yeah, uh, Drats, uh, you're, that's a good point that you could hide the base and jigsaw layer to be sure there aren't any visible gaps. But as I, I may have said it before you joined, my idea is not to try to make make them wonder if there's like little tiny slivers of the card that are missing. It's just to have them do a basic type of thing. Because uh, let's face it, in a D&D &D game, yes, you like puzzles, but you don't want those puzzles to be... Um, you know, like a 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle where you have to really try to work and figure out exactly uh, how every piece goes together. Or at least in my perception of my players is that that's not what they that's not what they would like. But yes, if you wanted to be really really precise and you did want to do something like hide a piece. And make them think they've got everything, but then when they put it all together, oh, there's a little piece missing. And you really make that piece super hard to find. Then that's, uh, that's another thing. This is more of an exercise of we're giving the players options to add new spells to their spell list. And we're trying to do it in a creative way instead of just saying, oh, hey, there's these cool new spells you can add to your spell list. Uh, so... That's that's the whole reason for this little um, story arc that we have in our Sunday game. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do uh, come over here to the Chicken a la King card, and I am going to do the same thing. And I'm going to add a layer, um, and I'm going to call this layer Jigsaw. And um, then I'm going to show a slightly different way of um, adding the layers on this one. So I'm going to quickly toggle over to this one. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six. I need six 
uh, six pieces of this card. So I'm going to start by going back to my pencil tool. And this time, I'm just going to go up to the top over here. And I'm going to run down here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now I have two pieces. Um, then I'm going to go here. Two, three, four. All right, so now I have one, two, I have three pieces. And I need to get three more. Okay, one, two, three, uh, four, five, And then go over here. So I've got one, two, three, four. Um, now I'm going to do something a little bit like what Dratz was talking about. Um, but I'm going to make it a little bit more obvious than he was probably thinking of. So I've got this here. Now I should have one, two, three, four, five pieces. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to start in the middle of this and go here, go here, go here, go here, go over here, go over here. Go over here and go over here. And now I have, uh, whoops, let's see. Uh, I may have to. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now I've got the six pieces, but the sixth one is entirely in, contained inside one of these pieces. So when they find one of the pieces, there's going to be a hole missing out of it. And then they have to figure out where that hole is and put that in there. All right, so now I have my um, jigsaw layer and my base layer. So now before I go and create any other layers, I'm just going to simply take my uh, fuzzy select, go over here and click on this. And then I'm going to copy this. And then, um, as I come up here, uh, I am going to uh, do a control V. And now you see, I get this little anchor and I get this little floating layer here. So what I can do is um, oops, I can say um, paste that to a new layer. So now uh, it will create a brand new layer for me. And then I go back to my notes. I figure out uh, where is this going to be? Well, this one is going to be in area 36. So now I just change the name to area 36. And indeed, I have that little piece there. Okay. Um, and then I can go back to my jigsaw layer. And I can take my fuzzy selector tool. And I can go about selecting the rest of these areas. So, control C. Uh, Okay, giving you an idea. Good. All right. Love it when people get ideas from things that they see 
uh, online. I think that's what we should all be doing if we're uh, creators, is we should all, hopefully we do things that will entertain and perhaps educate other people. But the height of doing something creative online is that you inspire somebody else to do something. So that's really cool, Dreads. All right. So uh, I am, I have copied this. Then I'm going to control V. I'm going to paste this as a floating layer. And I will make it a new layer. And then I will move that layer up here. <coughs> and I will say that I'm going to call this one <coughs> layer two. layer two. All right, then if I turn off the other layers, I can only see that piece. So, so far, so good. All right, then I go back to my a jigsaw, get my fuzzy selection tool, um, Go to the base layer, <coughs> copy this, and then um, go ahead and paste this to a new layer. And this layer is going to be layer 7. Or no, I'm just sorry. Area seven. This is area two. Whoops, two. All right. So I turn this off, and now I have um. Now I have that piece. Okay. All right, so area two, area seven, area 36. Um, then let's go to this layer. All right, we're gonna grab this one and copy and then paste it to a floating layer make that a new layer and this one should be area 16 all right and now this is the one they're going to find that has a hole in it All right, so then we go back here. <coughs> we copy this. Control C. Then we go ahead and we control V, layer, new layer. And we bring that up. And this one is gonna be area 22. Okay. And everything is working perfectly so far. All right. And that gives me one, two, three, four, five. So now I just have one more piece to do. And that's going to be. Um, 
this little piece down here. So I can go to my base layer, copy, then paste to new layer. And then this one is going to be in area 31. All right, so area 31. Area 31. All right. And then let me take a look at what we have. All right, so now we have all of our little pieces of this And then, yeah, Drat's the one thing that when we do it this way um, is we have uh, we have uh, it leaves the little lines uh, where the jigsaw was. If we just do that magic selection tool, that's the only thing that we wind up uh, doing this. Okay. Uh, all spells in D&D have a set level and type. Um, oh, okay. In 5e, they are all, all, a spell is always the same level, regardless of which class gets it. Now, in older editions of D&D, there were, in fact, um, some spells that one class would get at a certain level and other classes would get at a uh, completely different level so you would uh, you know they might both have access to it but for whatever reason uh, one class would get it earlier than the other classes in D and D fifth edition what they've done is every class has a school of magic and so, or a school or a discipline, you could call it, of magic. And then that spell is available to certain classes. But any class that can use that spell always gets it at the same level. So it's a little bit simplified in 5th edition, uh, where all classes that are able to use a spell get access to it at the same level. Um older editions there was that difference that sometimes oh uh, yeah the lines kind of contribute to it being torn apart absolutely and uh, that's the whole thing in in the idea for having them in different pieces is because of course very famously in unglued probably the most famous card out of unglued um uh, was the uh, Blacker Lotus card. And the Blacker Lotus card is um, kind of an improved Black Lotus, but it's a one-time use only. You're supposed to tear the Blacker Lotus into pieces and then add four mana of any one color to your mana pool. Play this feature as a mana source, remove the pieces from the game afterward. So um, that's kind of the whole reason I thought, oh, well... Maybe this particular player uh, who has this house um, where all the pieces are scattered, maybe this player has torn up other piece, other cards over time and the pieces are around. So um, you can watch the last, the most recent two sessions of uh, the Sunday Walker of Waterdeep game to see how I set this whole thing up from the standpoint of the players and how the characters get involved in this. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me.
Okay, I've got this stupid summer cold, and it's just causing uh, me to this nagging cough that I got with it. It gets better sometimes, and then sometimes it just crops back up again. So, uh, I've gone through on the stream so far and detailed how I create the uh, the various jigsaw pieces. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through and show how I create these as handouts to give to the players in Roll20. So I'm going to go back to the um, Blacker Lotus and I'm going to start turning off layers until I have only one layer showing. So this layer 34. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to export this as an image and um, I'm going to export this as a PNG image and it's um, Blacker Lotus Area 34 is what I want to call this file, this PNG file. So um, export that. Now I am doing things in a couple of different steps and it's because I just have this perpetual fear of um, screwing something up. So I am doing this the safest way that I know how. There are other ways you can do this that will take a little less time, but um, it might mean that you have to go back and do a lot of work over again if you screw it up. So we are doing this the uh, safe way. So now we're going to go um, export this one as um, Blacker Lotus Area 27. And you're going to, the thing that you're going to say is you're going to say, well, why do you have it the size of the full card? Because wouldn't it be obvious where the piece goes in relation to the other pieces? Well, that's what we're going to deal with a little bit later. All right, so then we go to area 1B and we're going to export as area 1b yeah area 1b um, all right then we're going to uh, export as this one will be area 38 All right. Then this one will be um, export as area 13. And then this one, sixth and final piece, will be area 32. All right, so now I have these um, these uh, six pieces, and I am essentially done with my um, actual Blacker Lotus card. So I can go ahead and I can just close that file. Now what I want to do is I want to go and I want to open the uh, individual uh, cards. So I'm going to open the Blacker Lotus Area 1B and 
then um, you guessed it what I'm going to do is I'm then going to crop this and I have uh, I have just about given up on the idea of trying to crop things uh, if they're going to be a separate image file uh, down to all the little nooks and crannies because it seems like a lot of times when you export those it's just going to bring back a square image anyway or a round image and you're going to be left over. The important thing for me is just to have those excess areas be transparent. So even if the file uh, turns out to be a square or a circular image that background just is invisible anyway. So uh, then you do image uh, crop to selection and then I'm just gonna go overwrite blacker lotus area 1b and I just save that as a um, as another PNG file and then I do the same thing with area 13 so go ahead and make this a okay all right then image crop to selection and then overwrite area 13 PNG and then I want to open area 27 and I will Again, crop this down to a certain size. Okay, and image, crop to selection. And then Overwrite the area 27 file. Then I open the area 32. And image crop to selection and then overwrite area 32 then open area 34 And oops. So then image crop to selection. Then overwrite area 34. And um, then I'll go finally open. Area 38.
and we'll make this one. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now image crop to selection. And um, we will overwrite area 38. Just one minute. All right. Okay. Um, and now I'm back to my camp. Okay. And I've saved these all as, um, uh, as PNG files. So now one thing that I get annoyed with GIMP about is that when you don't save it as a its default image file, it always asks you when you close it, hey you're about to close it. You haven't saved this as a XCF file. You sure you want to close it? Yes, of course I want to close it. Alright. But now those are um, those cards are there where I can access them within my Walker of Waterdeep game. And what I can do is I can go into my Roll20 game and let me see, I tested this before. I want to make sure that this is actually uh, going to work. I want to this open and I want to see yeah okay that works. All right um, go back to my uh, Yeah, this map loads kind of slow because it's kind of a big and clunky map. And what my players did is my players kept track uh, where they found uh, pieces of the card and um, so they know where they were when they found these pieces in the game and they put little um, put little letters to indicate uh, which character found that so o, o was Oyahusa, A was Adamant, uh, Inca and then Elora, uh, G is Galabar uh, so we are doing uh we're doing that okay so oh connection to the server has been interrupted anything okay good i think that's gone now all right so then what i have to do is i have to go in and i have to create a handout so i'm gonna add a handout and the handout uh, is area 1B. 
and that handout is going to um, is going to contain the piece of the card that appeared in that particular um, in that particular part of the map. So if I then go to my uh, do, 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 if I go, I think it's here, I think it's here, I think it's here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So then I can go to area 1B and bring that over here and it drops this little image uh, into the handout and then uh, because we know that Oyahusa found a card here in 1B I can put this into Oyahusa's journal so that now when we resume the game next Sunday we will see that Oyahusa has a handout that says, oh, hey, here's this piece. And this is the piece that you found in Area 1B. And then I can go through and I can do the same thing for all of the other, um, all of the other uh, places on the map. Now, they have already been through levels 1 through 4 of the house, or it's actually a three-story house with an attic is the fourth floor but they just found the way to get to the basement uh, which in a strange way this house is constructed the only way to get to the basement is from the attic and it's a long spiral staircase that just goes all the way down from the attic to the basement and that's the only way to get in there so um the there are still pieces of the cards they have of the cards they have not yet found in the uh, cellar. So when they come back to the game next time, they are each going to have several pieces of card, and they can, you know, look at those and share those with each other and try to figure out uh, which pieces go with which. Because when they finally get down to that tape elemental uh, in the um, in the cellar, they're going to have to feed all the correct pieces of the same card at one time into the tape elemental in order to uh, repair the card and have it be a pristine card once again. There's already handouts that the players have access to that show the full card, so they already kind of have a template. They know what what they're looking for and that's because they were shown copies of the card by the gods before they were sent on this mission and um which yes that was me kind of making things a little easy on them but uh i wanted to uh, i wanted it to be fun and not turn into a frustrating uh side mission uh, this is supposed to be kind of a little fun interlude uh, from the main story of the campaign and not something that causes a lot of uh, consternation and frustration uh, for the players or for the PCs. All right, so that's basically the process that, uh, that I go through. And, all right, come on. Okay. Okay, so, all right, interesting. Uh, all right, so now, I want to jump back over here, and I want to see... Uh, do we have any additional questions from folks? Because this is a... Is the stream still live? I think the stream is still live. 
Although my my Streamlabs screen has frozen on me, so I don't know if I'm still live or not. Hmm. You guys still there? Are we still live? All right, well, I hadn't planned on streaming much more than an hour tonight anyway, so we're getting about to the top of the hour. I uh, wanted to thank you guys for coming out tonight and joining me. Um, hopefully this is a... Uh, Hopefully this is a little bit of a uh, interesting thing for you all. And maybe some of you saw something you hadn't thought about doing before or got an inspiration for something you could do within your own D&D uh, &D games. Uh, remember that all through the month of August, the music that we have on our live streams is being uh, provided by Pipe Dream Hits. Uh, go over to pipedreamhits.com. They are a relatively new streaming music service. It's music by gamers for gamers, copyright free. You use Pipe Dream Hits in your uh, Twitch streams, your YouTube streams, your videos on YouTube, TikTok, whatever. You're not going to ever have any issues with that. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming and hanging out tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your week. We will be back on Thursday night for our regularly scheduled uh, Sword Coast Chronicles game. And they're kind of at an inflection point in that game because their bronze dragon ally uh, that helped them capture a cloud giant castle uh, actually... From the dragon's point of view, the party helped the dragon capture the bronze, the cloud giant castle because the dragon wants to keep that for himself. Uh, a flying castle is pretty effing cool, and a dragon's not going to give that up very easily. But they have found that all the defenders in the castle are dead after a big fight, except for uh, two toddlers, cloud giant toddlers, and a cloud giant adult who happens to be their uncle that's very protective of them the dragon is of the opinion that cloud giant uh, toddlers will eventually grow up to be adult cloud giants and better to deal with them now than to wait until they become adults the party are like no don't kill the kids so we're gonna see how this all works out um that will be an interesting thing to find out whether through sufficient roles and RP, the um, there's some sort of peaceable resolution that can happen, or whether there's just going to be a bloodbath and the party will have to pick sides. So we'll find out. All right. Uh, thank you again for hanging out. Hope we will see you again for uh, more live streams. Tell your friends if you like what we're doing over here. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube. Hey, subscribe on Twitch if you want to. That'd be great. We'd love to have some more Twitch subscribers. Um, that would be awesome. And remember, we do have a Patreon if you want to support us in other ways all right everyone take care and good night everybody